Hello, my name is Michael Keneally and this video I'm calling Tantric Astrology because it focuses on how your astrology can identify opposites in your nature and in your life path, apparent opposites. And the essence of Tantra is the reconciliation of apparent opposites and going beyond them to that which unifies them. Developing perception, using healing techniques, using empowerment techniques. And specifically, I'm telling you about this because it's part of my Master Vedic Astrology Foundation course. Now, of course, Vedic Astrology is tantric and I studied tantric spiritual systems when I did a five-year field study of spiritual forms new to the West from 1998, an ethnography, a social anthropology of individuals and communities following spiritual paths new to the West and so the tantric forms were Hinduism obviously where indeed this whole world, Mahamaya, can be seen as an illusion in a way, a world created by the endless mating of Shiva and Shakti, but an illusion which has immense concrete importance to us because we came here to develop perception, to learn certain lessons, to burn certain negative karmas from past life and to embrace the special spark which our soul chose to incarnate to bring our life to for this life, will we succeed or fail? And so of course Vedic astrology is tantric. But also I studied Buddhism and of course the strand, a major portion of Buddhism is tantric, particularly Tibetan Buddhism. So I studied various Tibetan Buddhist gompas doing highest yoga tantra, visualizing and meeting such august deities as Vajra Yogini and Haruka. And of course, quite a lot of the pagan revival is tantric and at its best, Wicca embraces the goddess and the horned god. Okay, so how does this relate to astrology and to your learning Vedic astrology? Well, first of all, I'd like to say I don't just limit the course to Vedic astrology. If you wish, you can cross over into Western astrology, which studies your psychological self. It's totally psychodynamic and valuably so. And of course, Western astrology includes the outer planets, the gods of change. Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, whose energies entered the human consciousness at the date they were discovered, and supremely Chiron, the wounded healer, our existential wound. So what I'd like to do now, after that very broad introduction, is give a brief focus. So let's say you're studying my Master Vedic Astrology course, and you're looking at Jupiter. Now Jupiter at his best is guru and enlargement and purpose. That's his divine nature. But of course each of us experiences the planets not so much as the divine nature but through filters of sign the planet falls in, houses the planet falls in, aspects and other things. So what we experience of a planet is very different often from his divine true nature. But when you do my Master Vedic Astrology course you get you know, loads of literature to start with and we study planet after planet with reference to your chart and my chart and thus have very authentic discussion. It's not sort of airy-fairy ranted formula, it's not doing the charts of celebrities when no one really knows the fullness of the life of the celebrity or etc. It's your life and my life. So let's to try and show you about tantric astrology and the reconciliation of apparent opposites 
do a sort of mini case study of Jupiter just to show how apparent opposites can be encompassed within our experience of one planet and how this perception can enable us to see the operation of Jupiter in our life through the birth chart and in our predictive astrology, for example, we might be moving into Jupiter Dasher or a Jupiter predictive period or a Jupiter predictive sub period. And it will make such sense of what's coming at us if we know, aha, I'm in Jupiter Dasher, I've just started it, or oh, I've moved into Jupiter, Jupiter K2, or whatever. So let's look a bit at how you might analyse Jupiter in your birth chart. Okay, well Jupiter is a natural benefic and so in his nature he's giving and enlarging and giving us divine purpose and teaching and opening us to wisdom and understanding. But in your life he could manifest as a first-rate malefic. For example, if you have Jupiter conjunct Chiron well, very typical of that could be, wow, wow, the sky's the limit, you know this makes sense, this is the answer, go for the stars. You know, this sort of ranting negative Jupiter. And so, seeing a natural benefic set in a malefic conjunction can be so valuable. Because if you heal that, you can heal others who might have similar issues you can actually heal your relation to Jupiter himself because your appreciation of divine teaching and purpose would become more grounded and thus would empower you generally, genuinely. So, note first, Jupiter is a natural benefic. Okay, Jupiter rules Vedic Sagittarius and Vedic Pisces using the sidereal zodiac which should be used for Vedic astrology as opposed to the tropical zodiac which is right for Western astrology. Now let's look at Jupiter. Say the Jupiter you're studying is at one Sagittarius. Well, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, so that's good, strong and positive. But negatively, Jupiter is right on the edge of the sign at one Sagittarius. So that means he won't have a central stage expression, he won't be so easy to contact, to manifest and express. And having that perception, if that sort of situation is in your chart, is so valuable because you can have the perception and you can do something about it. And when you're in a Jupiter predictive period or having a transit to Jupiter or transit of Jupiter to another planet, you can bear in mind that perception and try and heal what's happening to empower yourself. So we have the positive of Jupiter in his own sign, Vedic Sagittarius, but the negative that he's right at the edge of his sign. Okay, let's just look at another two-edged feature. The end of the sign before Sagittarius the end of Vedic Scorpio, the last two or three or four degrees, is in the Gandanta zone. And the first two or three or whatever degrees of, of Sagittarius is in the Gandanta zone. So the Gandanta zone is where water dissolves the end of Scorpio into the first flicker of fire, the beginning of Sagittarius. Now I have found that when we have planets in the Gandanta zone, on the one hand, we are insubstantial, most definitely, this world is insubstantial, there's real problems. But, because we're open to the void and the vastness, you know, because water has dissolved and fire is only just beginning to flicker, we're attuned to the vastness. So, Gandanta can be very inspirational, but the person needs to find solidity as well. Or the inspiration is water on the desert sands. So yet again, we have a mixture of, in inverted commas, good and bad. And finding the divine purpose in the, in inverted commas, bad. 
and the divine purpose in the good. And so going beyond the mere detail into the high spiritual insight into that is what Tantric astrology is about. It's a major pillar of Vedic astrology. So let's look at another feature of this. Um, okay, here's one example. Let's look at the situation. If you do have Jupiter at the beginning of Vedic Sagittarius, Saturn is transiting over your Jupiter now. Well, what a hard, depressing experience that is. Jupiter is there, being expansive, giving you purpose, making you expand. And indeed, here's just another feature, Vedic astrology has a, has a, a number of divisional charts or Varga charts, each of which tells you something about a special area of your life. And so you can look at the standing and rating of Jupiter in each of those. So you could say, oh, you know, I, I'm sort of... very limited in Jupiter in, for example, home issues, but in marriage issues I might be open to be being very, you know, enlarged and given purpose by my Jupiter. You know, looking at two different divisional charts. And yet Saturn comes along, so Saturn is transiting at the very beginning of Vedic Sagittarius now. So we're looking at the case where someone has Jupiter at the beginning of Vedic Sagittarius. And as I said, what a downer it feels. There's your expansionary Jupiter. You can assess the standing of Jupiter in your chart. You can see the way the other planets treat Jupiter by studying the Avashtas. And you can see the way Jupiter treats the other planets. And then Saturn comes along. Now Saturn is obviously a major expression of your karma. And indeed we study um, all the planets as lords of karma and I'm going to do another video about that but Saturn says these are the limits you were born to work with them if you're over expanding and ungrounded you'll get very depressed at trying to balance Jupiter and Saturn when Saturn transits over Jupiter Saturn will say, dot all the I's, cross all the T's, tie up all the loose ends. Your expansionariness will become more and more difficult. But you have to do it in a way. You have to lay a foundation before you can build a house. And so here's another expression of apparent opposites. Saturn, lord of karma, stern lord of limits and duties and responsibilities and karmic debts, has to be worked with at the same time as Jupiter, the planet of vast expansion, knowledge and teaching and purpose. And as that transit progresses, you can use this perception offered by Vedic astrology to actually balance the two and so go up a level in your own spiritual awareness and in your own spiritual maturity, in your own expression of yourself. And so in that way, Tantra goes through apparent opposites to put us in contact with the divine. And of course, in that way, it parallels the tantric spiritual paths where we can journey to meet a God and perceive a God maybe in his or her pure land or environment and maybe even assume deity and become a God in a way like Tibetan Buddhism does. And, the, you know, in the Tibetan Buddhist gompas I studied, people would, in a very special way, journey to meet Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of unlimited universal compassion, and then arise as Avalokiteshvara and go out into the streets of the city where the gompa was, offering the compassion 
of the great Bodhisattva and only being that. So I'm showing how study of apparent opposites can take us to a perception of the divine and even an embodiment of the divine. So have a look at my Master Vedic Astrology course. It's my foundation course in Vedic Astrology. There's further wonderful, more advanced courses you can go on to. And I hope to hear from you. Thank you.